I'm Gary Mavis, and I've had a lifelong obsession with classic cars. I caught the bug when I was just a small child, but since then I've been lucky enough to own and restore many of these rare beauties. Over the years I've learned how to tackle the complex mechanics of these cars, but still managed to indulge my passion along the way. But now I want to share my experiences with you, revealing the joys, the trials and the tribulations of classic car restoration. Each episode I'll meet fellow classic car enthusiasts to hear their stories, look at their cars and share their personal experiences. So come with me on my journey as I search from here to Europe and as far as the USA for the cars of my dreams. Discover their unique histories whilst working on them and bring them back to life. So join me, Gary Mavis, for a classic obsession. After a huge fire in 1957 and massive production costs developing the hugely successful E-Type throughout the 1960s, Jaguar were in trouble. So as an answer to their financial problems and a successor to the E-Type, in 1975, the XJS was born. But despite clever product placements in TV series such as The New Avengers and Return of the Saint, because of strike action, poor build quality, huge petrol consumption and unreliability, Jaguar hemorrhaged in their first four years of production which almost finished them. But it was a slow creep and 21 years later in 1996 when production finally ceased, Jaguar had built and sold a whopping 116,000 cars making it one of the most successful and revered Jaguars of all time and gaining true classic status. So today, I'm making the journey by train into the heart of the Derbyshire countryside, revisiting a place where I spent six years of my life back in the 1990s filming a TV series called Peak Practice. Hard to believe it was almost a quarter of a century ago. And as I pull into Alfreton Station, it's not just the memories that draw me back, but the possible chance to acquire my next project, one of British Leyland's true heavyweights, the Jaguar XJS V12, owned by my firm friends and landlords from back in the day, Darrell and Keith Betts. During a phone call recently, Darrell explained that after purchasing a Pride and Joy some 30 years ago, the car was enjoyed for a decade before spending its next 20 years laid up in a barn at the bottom of the garden. Now it needed a new home. So this is where it all happened, eh? It certainly did. It certainly did. For me, this was a no-brainer. This legendary big cat just had to be saved. So how long has this been in the barn? Oh, God, I don't Five know. Five years, four years-ish. Well, it hasn't run for four years? Yeah, it must be four years. Yeah, it, it must be. be. must be. In 20 years, you've probably done maybe a 1,000 miles in it. Why is that? It's you that started me off wanting to paint it because you said there's, it's lost its luster. Paintwork was all right, all in one piece and everything, no rust and all that sort of stuff, but it lost its luster and I thought, yep, that's right, it has lost its luster. So, as a treat, well, Daryl can have it painted. Yeah. But there was no, um, if I can remember, there's never been any rust on the car, has there? Yeah. No, not, no, not at no, all. No. Yeah. So, I mean, a good, a good paint shop would have tried to bring that back up again, maybe flattened and polished it and got the machine Oh, on God, it. yeah. No, they no, did, it was it a big, lovely. big job. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, rather than paint it, that's normally the first port of call, but sometimes it's just too far gone, or the lacquer's gone too flat or too thin. Carl Jonah went on holiday. That's true, yeah. Left his uh, top man, who was due to retire, and must have been 70 years old to do it. Yeah. yeah. And he got totally carried away, didn't understand the brief. So what, he'd like taken all the windows out and all oh, the... Oh, yeah, everything. Windows, all the leather, everything all was gone. Rubber. Everything was gone. It was an empty car, more or less. Just a shout. In the end, we just settled for a complete <laughs> respray of the whole lot, everything, you know, inside, probably, outside, everywhere. It's probably gone in the car's favour, though, because that's probably why, you know, the car's still here and it hasn't rotted away, because those cars were terrible for rot. Well, it never went out in the rain or yeah. the salt oh, it since that day. No, it didn't. Oh, not since then, no. No, Absolutely since that not. day, it no. never, it's never been out of the garage. But weren't the police inside. after Darrell for speeding anyway, so he had to hide it away. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to work in that. 
He used to take that dish every day. He used to go to work mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Come on, tell me the stories, Daryl. You what? used no, to no. burn it up the hill and all that. Oh, I know, I know, I know. We had a bit of a tiff about that. I was just overtook these cars up, going uphill and it sort of um, burnt a gallon of petrol in one mile. I mean, it just... A mile a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Some some engineering feat that was. It's, a, it's, a feat, I got it's an engineering feat. Don't do feat, that man. again. I was told. Don't do mm. that again. So didn't you get this as a birthday present? Didn't you buy it for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a birthday yeah, it present. Yeah. It was. Oh, so what was the mileage when when you bought you bought it second hand, didn't you? Yeah. It was about three years old. Ninety three. So there we are. That's the first one, yeah. Yeah. Forty six on the back there. Yeah. Forty six. Yeah. You know, in my mind, it was much less than that because the car was so nice. It was lovely. Still and, is, um, actually. The engine was a real revelation. The car just yeah, used to go. Lovely, yeah. It really did. Went like an intercity train, you know? Just a sussing noise, slight sussing. And that was at 120. Just a flat tyre. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember staying here really far memories. Really? What was it? About five years, here. was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're here a long time. Yeah, that's where it all You're happened. You're second home, you see. Wasn't it yeah. really? Yeah, it was. I remember at the time I was I was shooting home because we just had a baby, and I wasn't meant to go home because I'd be filming first thing the next morning. I'd always shoot home. And then she did. Them. One morning I just arrived, and the driver arrived five minutes later. I remember the nosy guy? <laughs> yes, and he, and he was putting his hand on the what he thought was the bonnet. He had a Porsche, had a Porsche Boxster. <laughs> we were laughing because the, the the engine isn't in the front, is it? <laughs> you could yeah. see him on his phone feeling yeah. the bonnet and going. Then, Oh, the engine's it's cold. It's, it's cold, he hasn't been anywhere. Yeah, they couldn't see us laughing, but yes, we were. <laughs> yeah, because we, we were checking it out, wasn't he? To see if it yeah. was hot. Yeah. yeah. Report back. You report back, yeah. I never reported back. I often used to get phone calls and have to say you're in the shower and then phone you on your mobile yeah. up in Liverpool and say they're after you. <laughs> and we say, well, we'll give Gary that script. He's not even here. Yeah, no, he? no. <laughs> we used to pile them up, didn't we? He used to be piles on, didn't we? Yeah. Well, <laughs> did he ever read them? No. Oh, good times, good times. It was. Yeah, very happy times. Good. I'm pleased it you was, enjoyed um, it. And you looked after me and it was very private. Oh, well, you looked after us. Private. You looked after us. Yeah, look at us. We didn't do anything for two years. <laughs> we did Seriously. Well, come on, anyway. Right, then. We better go. go on yes, we better go down. Yes, we can. We can. We can. Ooh, look at those legs won't move anymore. That's the other reason you should say that you don't drive it. You're too fat to get in it. Wow. Awakened after its long sleep. It's like it's frozen in time. So after some fresh fuel, a new battery, and four hours of fettling, she finally sees daylight.
So after the 90 mile journey, she's finally home and deposited safely in the garage. On closer inspection, this seems like a belter of a car. Paint looks good. The only bit of surface rust on the whole car. Interior will clean up a treat. But come on, guys. Apart from the obvious, we all know there's going to be a few more surprises along the way. Okay, so I'm just running the engine up to temperature. Uh, as you can see, it sounds really sweet. Uh, a few little problems on start-up. Um, one, I haven't got any brakes. Uh, there's a kind of ABS module over here with a little motor on it. Uh, that's meant to make a noise when you start the engine, but there's just nothing coming out of it. I know when I initially started the car, it was going piping red hot, so it's probably burnt the motor out, so I'm going to have to get a new one of them. And this thing here, uh, I've got a new one full of gas also. Uh, so that may be the problem. Um, Keith also tells me that it goes up to second gear, but it won't go into third until you like doing 80 mile an hour. So I've also bought a service kit for the gearbox. I'm going to drop the oil, uh, change that, and see if that solves the problem. If it doesn't, there's also a gearbox vacuum modulator, which fits to the side of the gearbox, which helps with smooth changing um, on the auto box. So it could be that. So we just have to suck it and see, really. But uh, it sounds lovely and sweet. Oil pressure's good. It sounds lovely and quiet, nice and smooth. It needs a damn good clean, as you can see, in these different places, and most other things. But uh, let's start by cleaning it, shall we? Let's see what we've got. So just to clear a few things up here guys, the Jag's been sitting in the barn now since the year 2000, only each year the car was taken a few miles up the road for its MOT before safely being deposited back in the barn. This happened right up until 2015 the car's last MOT, so in 7 years this car has never turned the wheel until now. So this is probably the car's first wash in 20 years. Okay, so I'm just going to try and sort this problem I've got out with the brakes. At the moment, I'm just running on front brakes, so I'm literally putting my foot through the floor to stop it. Uh, the reason being, you've got an ABS system here. You've got a small motor, a pressure switch. 
You've got this, which is like an accumulator, which gives you the power for your, your high pressure brakes. Now, I know when I initially got the car started, I could smell like coffee burning, and I traced it to this. This was piping hot, the motor. So it's actually burnt out because it's not working anymore. And I think Jaguar, as a safety precaution, they disarm the rear brakes when this happens because it needs the motor and the pub to be going. Uh, so I've taken the liberty of buying a brand new one of these, the accumulator, because these invariably become empty over 30, 40 years, however old the car is. And they're uh, a second hand unit from a scrapyard and it's all been tested. So it's all good to go. So I'm going to swap this out, put the other units in, bleed me brakes through and hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll sort the problem out. After the new part is fitted, I notice the pipe that supplies the rear brakes is different. The original has a rubber hose with a banjo screw with seals either side, whereas the replacement part has a solid pipe with standard ends. So I set about making a new one. Okay, so the way this normally works is you've got a gravity fed pipe that goes into here from your reservoir and then this pipe comes out of here it's normally like this and that goes right back towards your back brakes um, I've replaced this with this so as you can see This just goes straight into here. And it's just a hard line. It goes round the back. I've adapted this. So there you go. That's a nice hard line. Nice ends. All finished. And it just in effect replaces this one. It's exactly the same premise. There you go. The brakes are then bled and without an assistance I use a wooden block wedged against the seat to depress the pedal. Note that the rear brakes need to be bled with the ignition switched on and if the ABS motor kicks in for more than 45 seconds, switch off and allow the motor to cool down for at least two minutes before you proceed. The front calipers are bled the conventional way with the ignition off. And if the setup of the Treves brake system seems strange, I then move on to the gearbox oil pan, which for some strange reason was designed without a drain plug. I first have to remove the gearbox shock absorber on its bracket with its tension spring. 
just so it can drop the oil pan. I remove the large bolt first. Then the two smaller ones. I then support it with a gearbox jack before releasing the last four bolts. And with both exhausts out of the way and supported. I carefully lower the contraption. And with the final bracket removed, I'm then able to access the bolts and lower the pan. And on doing so, although the oil was a nice clean red colour, I was surprised to see the large amount of black sludge at the bottom of the pan. My mate John came up with a good theory that if a car is laid up for a number of years, the oil will eventually separate and the sludge drop to the bottom of the pan, leaving the clean oil above it. One thing's for sure, for all the money spent by Darrell and Keith over the years, diligently pointing out specific jobs they wanted doing, garages have just done the jobs that they wanted to do and in turn racked up the bills doing expensive jobs to hit their monthly targets. It's clear to me that in the Jags' lifetime, this gearbox has never been serviced. Tragic. Next, I move on to the vacuum modulator fitted to the side of the gearbox. On first glimpse, everything seems fine. Then on closer inspection, uh-oh. Burnt clean through by the sheer heat of the exhaust. You know, with a hole like this in the pipe, this would never be able to make a vacuum from the manifold, determining smooth gear changes. So with a new one fitted, a new elbow and pipe, hopefully this will solve the mystery problem with the gearbox. Now on to the next mystery. The knocker noise coming from the front is caused by worn bushes on the shock absorbers. And on closer inspection, I find bolts missing from the steering rack. Now, according to the records, it was fitted with new bushes and a new steering rack just a few hundred miles ago. Oh well, it looks like I've got my work cut out again, putting right other people's shoddy workmanship. As the saying goes, there's no such thing as an easy restoration. Thank you for watching this episode of Gary Mather's Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and join me next time as I tackle the car's interior. Return to Derbyshire to put the car through its paces. And compare Jaguars with Liverpool legend, John Aldridge.